Hi everybody, the mature simmer here. So welcome. A little worried about how just the menu is floating here that this may be a bit much for the system, but these are older games. I would think they could be handled. And when I say older, I think it's you know two, three years old, but certainly something that should be possible. But let me get back on track here. So Black Friday, that usually means some things I've had my eye on end up making it into my Steam account. And so at this point, sharing kind of, I guess, background information for me. Uh, so TV shows, I love watching medical shows and firefighting shows and uh, cop shows. So, and the NBC series, you know, the NBC Chicago series, me and my wife love them, Chicago Meds, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD. And so I've always kind of had my eye on, I'd love to cover all aspects of that in my simming. And so with Project Hospital, I had the, the Chicago Med part and definitely been enjoying that. But I have not had a firefighting or a police simulator, and I have solved both of those problems, but this is obviously the firefighting simulator. I have not looked at this game. I have not opened it. I'm going to do this one and the police one kind of on the fly just so I can discover it along with you and hopefully that'll make for a bit of an entertaining viewing experience as I fumble around and try to learn things and also you know help you learn if you're new to it or taking a look at it. Right, well, everything is set to high, it looks like, on the video. So we're going to go ahead and just leave things as it is. Might have to adjust the audio. We'll take a look. I'm here in the U.S., so I'm going to leave those things alone. All right, and it looks like it can sense my wheel. So hopefully everything will work. So let's go into new game. All right, it's a siren. The fire has spread to the roof of the house as well as an adjoining room. Backdraft potential in the area. Use extreme caution. A secondary unit is on site providing water coverage for the burning roof. Evacuation status of the house still unknown. All right, well, I'm able to look around a bit. I can't like look over all the way to the driver. That's as far as it lets me look. Dispatch to unit one. Ladder truck is on scene and has assumed safety. Dispatch to unit one. Park in front of the building and the inline establishment. Unit one to dispatch. Copy that. Parking in front. All right. I'm hoping it's going to give me some information on what to do. Well, that's fire. It's actually good-looking fire. All right, well that was quick. So is it just going to give us a view of them fighting a fire and then say, hey, we're going to get trained on all this eventually? Oh, well that's interesting. Someone's trapped in the bedroom! Get that person out of there! All right. Get inside the house. Alright, I guess I keep going. Alright, grab Halligan. Alright, I gotta hold it. Break the door. Alright. Cool. I'm familiar with those. Door breach, success. Alright, and then we'll be able to get out of here. A little bit of a challenge. Alright, I'm trying to zoom in and out with the medium button or middle button on my mouse. Not working. Alright, place victim. There we go. Thanks. We'll take you from here. You can get back to putting out fires and Thanks for getting me out of here. 
Alright, grab the nozzle and fight the fire in the garage. Alright, so it's giving me... Alright. I did try shift. Alright. And now... Alright, so I'm press the button. And... I'm not quite sure. Just spray water randomly? Or am I supposed to, like, shoot it at those icons? Doesn't really give me any information, does it? Alright, so I just have to hold the mouse button. And obviously it just takes whatever time it takes. That car is toast. Can I crouch? Ah, okay. Because I'm like, my fellow firefighters are crouching. Maybe that gives me a better angle. So... Yeah, I don't know if I just have a bad job here, or... Or what the situation is. It looks like they're... Oh, okay. So, was I just in the wrong place? Because I was just shooting it up in the in the air, and now, you know, now I was hitting the base, so it does a little bit better. Can I move forward a bit? Because I'm assuming we want to, uh, you know, kind of get in here and, and kind of work on it together. Again, there's just not a lot of information It's a lot of noise. Alright, well, it looks like we're, we're kind of getting the car. Is that the tree outside? It seems to be. So I just don't know that that really helps. Alright, should I move over here and help him on this side? Maybe try to get things on the bottom? Alright, so he moved in with me, so... That's good, I would think. Alright, so, I mean, it's kind of as you'd expect. You're just kind of trying to douse the fire with, with where things are. I mean, I think those icons are helping a little bit. So, I think we've got stuff in the ceiling. So it's kind of, you know, getting all of that put out at that level. Let's see what we can do here. I mean, it seems like we're making some progress, but hard to tell. Let's see, can we get... So we probably don't want all this fire overhead. That's probably one of the worst things we can be doing. I don't know that I can reach. Woo, that's flaring up a bit. So yeah, I'm gonna... I don't know how we'll divide episodes here. I'll, I'll just kind of play and try to keep things, you know, not incredibly, incredibly long. But, alright, so definitely kind of need to get this upper stuff put out. So it does seem like those icons help me a bit. So we'll see if we can get the roof and all that. All right, we've got someone around there. Is that all right? Debriefing. Cool. So we completed the mission. So debriefing. Let's see what it tells us. Right, so that's the title, but we rescued someone and we put out a fire. I'd say those are pretty key things for a firefighter. Congratulations, you've successfully completed your first mission. You are now on the interactive city map. Here you can select your next mission. The next mission is already available to select. With growing experience, more will be unlocked. Before responding to your next emergency, you should sharpen your skills. No better place to start than the training facility. 
You can always visit it by selecting it in the ICM interactive map. I don't know what that means. Do you want to take a look at the training grounds now? Sure. All right. So dealing with doors and walls, dealing with windows, the circular saw. So maybe today will be a training day. will get you familiar with using forcible entry tools on doors and walls. Walk forward and open the door. The next door is locked. Grab the crowbar off the bench and walk towards the door. All right. Then break so it open. Everything is. Whoops. Everything is a uh, E button. Good work. Now place the crowbar on the ground in the glowing box. Oh, okay. I see. Whoops. I didn't put it in the right place, so I have to be standing there. I have to pick up the HAL again. They have this thing called a slam again that one of the characters built on Chicago Fire. So, it's a combination of a sledgehammer along with the HAL again. I assume that's named for someone, but I don't know. The demo hog. Alright, well, I guess we'll see how this works. Looks very similar to a Halligan, so. Alright, it's not even telling me to drop things anymore, but. Alright, axes. Do I have to be. Ah, uh, okay, I see. That's a little more challenging. This I've seen them do for sure. Like if you can't get in and you can't get out. Examine the wall for cracks and break through with your axe. Still can't quite get through. There we go. Now place the axe on the ground in the glowing box. Alright, well, that was easy enough. Dealing with windows. This training will familiarize you with using forcible entry tools on windows to enter and exit rooms and buildings. Now, grab either tool on the bench, walk over to the window, and smash it open. Okay, now climb through the window into the next area. At times, the window is too high to reach, so you'll need to climb onto it. All right, so now we traverse the window. So Good. E is like the, the thing. Smash either window and climb through to the next area. Yeah, easy enough. This exercise will familiarize you with using power saws to cut through locks to open doors and vents. Okay, pick up the circular saw from the ground. Good. Now use the saw to cut the lock on the vent ahead. You have to be careful, so aim for the indicated target. How do I aim? Once more, pick up the saw from the ground. All right. I see. So we can see like the progress on the lock going on. Now, walk over to the garage and use the saw to stop completely. All right. That seems easy enough. Ladder. This training exercise will familiarize you with using ladders. To use a ladder, you must first attach to it. Walk over to the indicated spot and connect your. I see. And then we okay. climb. Now reconnect yourself to the ladder and climb back down to the ground. I see. And then I go down. All right. I get it. Cool. Okay. 
Now what? Anything? Or is that it? Mounty. Connect to the new ladder beside you. Oh, I see. So it like swapped ladders on me. Alright, why was it? Good. I guess I got Connect too to close. Tube. You've equipped a Halligan tube. Use it to snap. Alright. Nice. Now use the door to go outside and climb the ladder up to the roof. All right. Where's the ladder? Uh -huh. All right. Like, where's the ladder to get to the roof? Okay. Now climb back down, and we'll continue. All right. So, just need to figure out how you interact with the ladder. Okay. All right. Now climb back. I didn't have a problem before. What is happening? All right. I can't really like zoom in or out. Let's see, I can do that. Okay. There we go. Climb back down and we'll continue. All right. Do I have to climb all the way down? Oh, that's literally it. All right. So this is getting a little bit more interesting. With this training exercise, we'll familiarize you with how quickly fire can spread. Okay. Stay where you are and just watch the fire spread. Notice how fast it jumps from object to object. Alright, those pallets are definitely going pretty well. We'll see. I mean, I guess we, yeah, just need now, to... Grab a hose out the fire. Alright. So it kind of does it in a weird way. Alright, and again, I'm thinking we need to spray on the little spots it shows us. So, looks like kind of start at the bottom and then go from there. I assume the cardboard's gonna go up way faster and then it'll go... Yeah, so the cardboard, that's way quicker than the pallets than the wood was. And I'm sure that's the flashpoint or something. I don't know that they're going to get that uh, specific with us. So see that pallet up front okay, you know the drill. still is not. Alright. So start in the center. It seems like just wherever I'm spraying it kind of gives me some targets, but... I'm assuming I really shouldn't be moving too many places. Let's see, let's get the pallet out. I think that's going to be a bit more aggressive once it's burning. I could be wrong. All right, there we go. Wow, that's a mess. Oh, I assume that... All right. Makes it worse. Water and grease fires don't mix. Grab an extinguisher and aim it at the base of both fires. Sweep the extinguisher side to side on the plane. Make sure you put it out. Good work. When out on calls, look for different types of flames so you can be ready for any grease or chemical fires you run into. Alright, and obviously I think there was a bit of, like, how long the fire extinguisher had. Now... This training exercise will familiarize you with how to effectively fight a fire using the hose aiming interface. Alright, grab a fire hose and enter the door in front of you. Yeah, 
Yeah, I would assume, like, shooting it further... The thing I don't know is I assume you can't just, like, be in the fire or something. Like, I assume there are things that you need to be doing to, uh, more effectively, you know, it, to get to it. I mean, but I think... Alright. So, this one seems a little easier, but maybe it just seems that way. I don't know. I mean, it looks like... I don't know if it's cardboard. It just seems faster. Fire's out. You may have noticed the sparks coming from the lamp on the table. The sparks can and will reignite the fires after you put them out. This can create a dangerous situation of potential fires in areas you thought were safe. There are guns electricity will start the fire multiple times. The best way to deal with electrical fires is to cut the main power by finding and using the building's fuse box. So, instead of wasting water on an electrical fire, Walk over to the fuse box on the wall and turn off the electrical supply. Alright, there we go. Disconnect electricity. Put out the fire. Now I need to be able to get the nozzle. It took a while, so obviously it's spread a bit okay, more. Fire's out. Now walk into the next room. All right, what have we got going on here? All right, I'm like, is it the wrong door? Aha, uh -huh. all right. Well, now we right, need to... you already know how to deal with grease fires, grab an extinguisher and put those fires out. You'll notice that both the attack hose and the CO2 extinguisher use the same interface to help you put out fires as efficiently as possible. Okay, fires out. Job done. All right. So we're getting close here. This exercise will get you up to speed on smoke, how it affects your vision, and how to effectively clear it. Smoke is dangerous and can seriously harm you, which is why you'll always be equipped with an SCBA system to ensure you can breathe in any situation. When going into a smoke-filled area, be sure to use your helmet-mounted flashlight. It'll really make a difference. Turn it on now before entering the building. Smoke rises. Getting below the neutral plane of the smoke keeps you in cooler air and improves your vision of the area. Stay below the smoke level by crouching. The best way to deal with smoke is to eliminate it. Venting a room allows the smoke to clear and makes it easier for you to see any dangers. This will really help when doing search and rescue operations. To clear the smoke, walk over to a window and open it. Good. With only a single window open, it'll take some time for the smoke to clear. To speed up the process, open all the windows in this room. Alright, so just trying to figure out exactly how we interact with it. Let's see. Go ahead and open all the I'm windows. I'm trying. But it's not. There we go. Like I saw it come up. I just have to get close enough. Go ahead and open all the windows in this room. There we now, go. Open the door and enter the next area. It's full of smoke. Stay crouched so you have the maximum amount of it. Doesn't really look that smoky. Like I get it says it's full of smoke, but I guess I would expect something okay. more visible. Drill. Stay low and open all the windows to Right. Okay, we're going to take a different approach for this room. A smashed window is just as effective as an open window. If you need to vent smoke but run into a locked window, don't let that stop you. Grab a tool off the bench and smash both windows. Right, there's no... Oh, I see. I'm like, there's no tool. <laughs> All right, I don't like this tool. I want the hell again, come on. All 
How do I uncrouch? It's not telling me that. All right, fine. It's going to make me do this. There we go. Nice work. The smoke will clear out in no time. In this next phase, we'll take a slightly different approach. If you still have the forcible entry tool, use it to smash open one or both of the windows. If you don't have a tool, Smoky in here too. Remember to stay crouched to improve your visibility as the smoke clears from the window you just smashed. Now right. open the door. You did it. All right, easy enough. So just a lot of smashing. All right, now we're getting close. About one of the most dangerous situations you'll ever encounter. A backdraft. Backdrafts often surprise even experienced firefighters. Backdrafts occur when the oxygen within a room has been used up, and then more oxygen is rapidly reintroduced into the area. This is caused by opening a door or window in an oxygen depleted environment. When backdrafts occur, fire explodes out of the door or window and can become a fast moving fireball, causing damage to anything in its path can even badly injure you. Okay, enough talk. Now we're going to show you a backdraft event. I know what you look for in a potential backdraft situation. First, walk over to the window on the left and look into the room. You'll notice that the room is full of smoke, but there are no visible signs of flame. Yeah. This indicates that the room is above its upper flammability limit. This means that the gas or vapor in the air is capable of producing a flash fire. It just needs an ignition source. So I'm hoping you can hear the narration. So we're going to grab an attack line and then we're going to enter the house, okay? Okay. Look at the locked door on the left. Notice that the door is different than other doors and has signs of a potential backdrop. In addition to the room being full of smoke with no visible flame, there's also smoke at the base of a door along with a pulsing sound. You hear it? Uh, it's a low thud. I do hear it. This sound seems like it's repeating because the room's trying to suck air into it. It needs oxygen to reignite the fires within. Okay, the door's unlocked. Open the door, but immediately back away from it to avoid the blast from the back. Holy moly. The area opposite the door was caught in the fireball and is now on fire. Put out the flames in this room, then move through the door into the next room and extinguish the fire there. Alright. And obviously, yes, because we got oxygen in here, I'm assuming that is what then allowed it to ignite. So. Lots of stuff, but yeah, this is uh, pretty interesting. It certainly helps you learn about the challenges of this, and it isn't just simple arcadey stuff. I mean, it's certainly simpler, I'm sure. Oh, we can hear it. Notice that the next locked door has signs of a potential backdrop. Do you see the smoke at the base? Do you hear the pulsing sound? Okay. Yep, open it and get out of the way. So, we're always listening for that pulsing sound, huh? Let me crouch here, because I can't see a whole lot. Alright, I'm assuming this is going to be it. See, now, in stuff like this, like, I guess once you're spraying it, like, how would you know there's a grease fire? Like, because this is like one of those kitchen spaces that we did have the grease fire in. And so, like, I could be spraying it and, and the water's not going to help. See, like, up in that. Good work. All right. I said before, even experienced firefighters can be surprised by backdraft. So pay attention to any closed door that you approach and look for signs of backdraft. It could save your life. All right. 
So, just a couple more things. This training exercise will familiarize you with setting up attack hoses to fight fires and show you how to connect a fire truck to a hydrant water supply. First, probably important. Water supply line. This ensures you never run out of water when fighting fire. Now, walk over to the indicated compartment on the truck and grab a supply hose. The supply hose is the yellow one. Okay, now, look directly at the connector on the truck. You'll notice that oh, you okay. to remove the cap. Connect the supply nice line. Walk over to the indicated fire hydrant. Good. Just like the connector on the truck, look directly at the connector on the fire. Alright, so we've got water. Cool. Oh, Walk uh, over to the rear of the truck and grab a supply line. Another supply line. Head over to the indicated connector on the other side of the truck and connect the supply line to it. Like before, remove the cap, unroll the hose, and attach the hose coupler to the truck supply. Okay, now we're going to attach an attack hose to the truck. Attack lines are colored red to indicate they're different from supply lines. Now. All right. So we've got a hose. Good. Now walk over to the indicated part of the truck where you can connect. Ah, uh, okay. Nice. We're going to need a nozzle for the attack line. The nozzle allows you to increase or stop the flow of water as needed. Now, pick up the coupler from the ground and walk to the back of the truck. Open the lower compartment and swap the hose coupler with the nozzle. All right, where is the cup? Oh, I see. And then we're going to equip the now nozzle. That you have a nozzle. Look directly at the coupler on the ground and attach it to your nozzle. Okay. All right. <laughs> Who's fighting with me? Like, how do I know who's got the you know, the the score or whatever. Goodness, there's a lot going on. This is a big fire. They're not kidding. Seems to be a lot. So, I suppose at least we've gotten to do some work on the fires here. Yeah, it looks like we're getting kind of stuff underneath could come back. This is definitely a bit challenging. So it's kind of trying to keep things from spreading, but obviously like the side of this is burning too, which is not helping anything. Goodness. Alright. There is a lot going on here. I'm just not sure. I guess it probably is better to start at the top with stuff like this and then go down. I'm not sure. Because it is definitely raging, I'll tell you that. Let's see. Let's get this out a bit. Because, like, yeah, I really can't get a great angle there. My goodness. This is just not getting put out. This is much more challenging than one would think. I'll tell you that. It is... It's like... The stuff underneath is making it keep going or something. So 
Yeah, like, how do I... How do I get that up there? Did I... No, I didn't get it yet. Wow. Come on. Alright, did I get it finally? Maybe. So... Oh my goodness. I thought we were done once we got this part done. That is crazy. Alright, again, I think it's like underneath and in the back or something. So I think that's always the challenge with these. Well, this is certainly going to take plenty of time, I'll tell you that. This is almost as crazy as that garage fire. Thank goodness for the supply line, I'll tell you that. Like, I can't even imagine how much water we've used if we had to go from a tanker. Oh, it just seems like I'm not getting what I need there. Come on. Do I have to back up? Like, I can't seem to quench this over here. I don't know what the trick is. Let me get some of this going. And that might help. Alright, let's see. Come on. Put it out. Because there's nothing up there burning. I mean, can I... I can't climb. Okay. So I have to do it from down here, but I am not... I mean, I'm aiming at the icon, but it is not giving it to me, no matter what I'm doing. So maybe if I'm further away... Like, this seems to... go relatively quickly here. As far as, you know, the single layer. Alright. So... Can I get that from further away? There we go. Just needed a little bit better angle on it, I guess. Alright, so a couple tall pieces again here. And then maybe, wow. There's just, again, a lot going on. So just trying to figure out where to, where to aim and where to go to get it to work, and obviously smothering it on the bottom is helpful, I think. Alright, so I'm going to try to get these out so that I don't have material from the side. Again, get underneath, get that bottom part, and then it'll become a little bit easier, I think get up there. Alright, come on. Oof. That was a big fire. They're not kidding. Alright, a couple things here. With this training exercise, you'll give commands to your squad mates. This will allow others to complete tasks for you while you focus on other objectives. Have a look at the upper right corner of your screen. You can see the AI indicator along with the associated shortcut. Point at the circle on the ground and press the shortcut for the AI that you've just seen in the upper right corner. The AI character will now walk to the indicated location. I'm on. I've got your back, boss. Okay. So, what do I need to do? Like, look at it? Yes, sir. I see. Now direct the AI to the second circle, followed by the third. I've got your back, boss. Yes, sir. Well done. You've just learned how to give go-to commands. Now, call the AI to your position. To give the command, hold down the AI shortcut key until the status icon in the upper corner changes to the follow symbol. The AI will now follow you. Walk along the waypoints. As you can see, the AI is following you in 
close proximity as you move around. As you can tell, the AI is very closely following your movements. Yes, sir. I've got your back, boss. Oh, the waypoints are over there. Go ahead and instruct the AI to wait. Hold down the AI shortcut key until the status icon in the upper right changes back to the idle symbol. Let's continue with the final part. Two victims need help in that building. Your mission? Rescue them. Head through the door and into the building. The door's locked. Instruct your AI to equip a Halligan tool and come to your location. All right, open the command wheel by hitting... What key is that? I don't understand what I'm being asked to press. Oh, okay. I'm on. All right. All right, you can instruct the AI to open the door for you. AI can interact with all context-sensitive objects like doors, windows, victims, and many other <laughs> I see. All right. Alright. So how's he gonna do? Hopefully he'll be quick. But it takes a bit of time, so I'm going to get the training done so that we have this all in kind of one episode. Because otherwise it won't be as interesting, I think, starting the second episode and still doing training. So, alright, he's got a little bit more over there. And then that may be it. There's another fire in the next room. Oh, command okay. Command AI to deal with the fire there, too. Give another go-to command to send the AI into the room with the fire. Yes, sir. All right, there he goes. Now I see there's stuff on the side, too. I'm like, why is he not shooting at the stuff in front? So, at least the AI's a little good at doing it, although they're not moving as much as I was moving. I don't know, they're just spraying. But, again, maybe it's just AI and it just works that way. Well done. All fires are extinct. Don't forget to get both victims to the paramedics. Use the AI shortcut again while aiming at the victim. While the AI is bringing the victim to safety, they're no longer available for other commands because their main priority is getting the victim to the paramedics. Go ahead and carry the other victim to the paramedics yourself to finish this training mission. Yes, sir. All right. There Our we go. Safe, boss. We're just going to pile them on each other? I guess so. <laughs> All right, last one about this ladder trucks. This will familiarize you with how to use ladder trucks and aerial arms to attack fires from above and to rescue victims in elevated locations. Yeah, that's Before cool. Before extending the truck's ladder, we must first stabilize it and ensure that the truck will not tip over with the ladder boom extended. Walk over to the indicated control panels and extend all the truck's outrigger arms. While deployed, the outrigger arms simultaneously bypass the vehicle's movable suspension and gives the truck an overall wider stance. Good. Right. The ladder arm offers you three degrees of movement. Up, down, left, right, and forward, backward. Extending the ladder arm forward and backward. All right. Now, All right. Use the indicated controls and move the ladder in the forward and backward direction, making the ladder length longer and okay. shorter. So retract or. Excellent. Now, All right. You're going to use the ladder arm and bucket to rescue some victims. 
Use the ladder Oops. arm controls and move the ladder bucket to either indicated area. Oh, Wait shoot. the victim to walk to the bucket. You're essentially using the ladder bucket to give them an escape route. So once the victim has reached the bucket, they've moved into the safe zone and are considered safe. Am I going in the right direction? It says the roof, but is there a victim really up there? Seems really far away. Okay, clearly I'm missing something. Uh huh. I am. So it's that roof. Exit the bucket by pressing the use key. All right, so I cannot go any further out. So let's see. Not close enough to the ground. So move the bucket to the victim on the roof. Well, I can't do that. Like it's fully extended. The player can exit the bucket by pressing the use key. Yeah, it's like we're it's like we're too low. Move arm up and down, turn arm. C oh, control the basket arm. Oh, I see. Okay. So which one is it? Remember to hold it looks like oh the up arrow. Or some other up arrow. Player can exit the bucket by pressing the use key. All right, which I don't understand what that arrow is. I'm pressing all the arrows, but it's not working. Hmm. Control the basket arm. All right, I apologize, because obviously, again, I said I'd be learning. So remember to hold. Yeah, see, because that's just moving all the arms. Like it's not, I'm, I'm holding the other piece, but it's looking, let's see. All right, so I ended up having to, I it mistakenly restarted, but now I understand what I'm doing here. The Oops. player can exit the bucket by pressing the use key. All right, so let me go down here. And then it's the shift key that moves the bucket arm. So that was the part I was not getting. So let's see, and then we can extend the arm, lower it. So there we go. The player can exit the bucket by pressing the use key. Exit right. the bucket and rescue the victim by interacting with them and returning to the bucket. All right, why can I not do this? Am I too high still? The player can exit the bucket by pressing the use key. All right. So now I need to. All right. Follow. Are they going to enter? Okay. You've saved one victim. All right. Now position the bucket near the other indicated roof and wait for the victim to reach the bucket. Oh, I see. So. Swing that around. That moves pretty fast, which is good because I'm okay, sure. You've saved one victim. All right. So we're gonna have to probably carry them. Fatal error. All right. It doesn't look like it's gonna give me anything specific. So at this point, we'll say we're okay. All right, so we have a very little progress bar. But at this point, we're going to call this an episode. 
So again, something new that I'll be trying. Certainly enjoy the concept of the firefighting and um, again I've got the, the police one that came from the same company. So this is the same company that does bus simulator and construction simulator, Astragon. So definitely, I, you know, at this point I think I've got everything that they put out. So those should be things that appear on the channel from time to time. Certainly provide any comments, let me know level of interest and so forth. That's going to be the most important thing. Uh, certainly my interest level will determine when I play it without any feedback, but uh, you know, if people are interested, I'm certainly uh, not opposed at this point to doing more of something and less of something else. So uh, right now, views are pretty even on most things, but at this point, I'm not going to drag this on any longer. If you haven't liked the video yet, please consider doing that. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, and if you're not a subscriber, as you can see, I try to just share various things with you. and. You know, if you'd like to do that and more easily find things, I'd suggest you consider subscribing. With that, I'll see you next time.